In 2019, Rebecca Reusch was a 15-year-old girl who lived with her parents in Neukölln, a neighborhood of Berlin, Germany. Like any girl her age liked to spend time on social networks, especially on TikTok and Instagram where she was very active. The teenager had a 27-year-old sister named Jessica who lived in the same neighborhood with her husband Florian and their young daughter. Rebecca was so close to her sister and her niece that some weekends she stayed to sleep at her house. The girl's parents never opposed this because they lived very close and knew that Jessica would take good care of her. On February 17, 2019, Rebecca told her parents that she would sleep in her sister Jessica's house. It's true that the next day she had class but since Florian was at a party with his co-workers, the girl thought it was the perfect time to have a girl's night. Her mother agreed but made her promise that she would arrive at school on time the next day. As always, Rebecca slept on the couch, and it is known that at a quarter to six in the morning Florian arrived at the house after the party. That day Jessica left early because at 7 a.m. she had to leave her daughter in the nursery to go directly to work. So at this point Florian was alone with Rebecca in the house. At 7.15 a.m., Rebecca's mother called her on the phone to make sure she had gotten up to go to school. However she skipped her voicemail. The woman thought that maybe her daughter's phone had run out of battery so she called Jessica to ask about her sister. Her eldest daughter told her that she was already at work but to make sure that Rebecca had gotten up she called Florian, her husband. The man at that time told her that the teenager was not in the house, so everyone assumed that she had gone to school. This is something that is quite strange because classes didn't start until 9 a.m. So why did she leave so early? It's true that she had to go by bus but this was something that didn't take her long. At 8.42 a.m. her mother sent her a WhatsApp and did not receive a response either. Although on this occasion the message appeared as delivered but not read, which suggests that she had the phone turned on. Despite not locating her, the family didn't want to panic. However, the hours passed and Rebecca still gave no signs of life in the worst. Her parents received a call from the school saying that the girl had not attended that day. This was not normal at all because Rebecca was very responsible so they immediately reported her disappearance to the police. Here the agents did something incomprehensible and that is they did not process the complaint until the next day, which led Rebecca's family to think that they did not take the disappearance seriously. Because of this, they decided to ask for help through the social medias to be able to find her. The police, for their part, shared photos of Rebecca with her physical characteristics and the clothes she could wear that day something that didn't suit the family at all. According to what they said, they gave them many recent photos of the girl, but the police decided to use one from Instagram for the missing paper. The problem with using this photo was that Rebecca had a lot of makeup and had several filters so she didn't look like her. What her family said was that if they published a photo of the girl that was not natural, no one would recognize her. In this poster, the police added several things that Rebecca could wear that day, including a Vans backpack, a blanket purple, her pink jacket, the mobile phone, her Polaroid camera and a sweatshirt. Many people came to think that the fact of carrying so many things was because she had escaped from home. But this theory was unlikely for the police because Rebecca was very close to her family and would have never done such a thing. The agents decided to check Florian and Jennifer's house because it was where Rebecca had been last seen. They even brought police dogs that followed the girl's trail to the bus stop she had to take to go to school. According to the media, it seemed that they had not found anything in the couple's house or garden, but a few days later and to the surprise of many, the case changed from missing person to homicide. On February 28, 2019, the case took a radical turn with the arrest of Florian, Jessica's husband. The agents suspected him for his constant contradictions and for his lies. Apparently Florian told them that on the day of the disappearance he arrived at his home at 5.45 a.m. after a party and immediately went to sleep. However, thanks to the house router, they discovered that Florian's phone had been connected for a long time. The man was sending messages and looking at websites for adults, which indicated that he was not sleeping. And most importantly, Rebecca's mobile phone was connected to the same router between 6 and 7.46 a.m. which indicated two things. The first one that Florian's phone was working at the same time as Rebecca's. And the second that the two were in the house awake. It must be remembered that when his wife called him after 7.15 a.m. he told her that Rebecca was no longer there. So with all this the authorities thought that Florian was involved in the disappearance of the teenager. 
However, due to a lack of evidence, they had no choice but to release him. The agents continued their investigation and on March 4 they arrested Florian again. It seems that on the morning of the disappearance Florian and Jessica's car, a cherry-colored Twingo, was captured by a speed camera at 10.45 a.m. in the direction of Poland, a trip that takes approximately an hour and a half. Since Jessica was working at that time, the driver had to be her husband. That same night the car was recorded again doing the same trip. Despite this, Rebecca's family completely supported Florian and they refused to believe that he was involved in the case. This was something that confused many people especially when it was known that the agents had found Rebecca's hair and fibers from her blanket in the back seat of the car. The family said that this was normal because Rebecca often got in that car when her sister was driving. After all this information was released in the media, the agents received several calls from people who saw on the day of the disappearance a car like Florian's which is very characteristic, in a wooded area of Brandenburg, which led them to think that the man had gone there to hide something. They immediately began to search exhaustively in that area, even carrying specialized dogs, and ended up inside Wolziger Lake. But unfortunately, despite the efforts, they didn't find any clues about the teenager's whereabouts. At this time, Florian was still in custody. Finally with all the pressure he fell apart and decided to confess but not what the agents expected. Florian stated that on the day of the disappearance he traveled to Poland because he was trafficking in illegal substances. According to him, he didn't want to tell it before because he knew he would get into a good mess, especially doing that kind of thing in another country. He also claimed that he had made a second trip because during the first one he had lost his wedding ring and wanted to get it back. But for the agents this was a lie and the only possible option for them was that he had lost his ring working with his hands. Maybe while burying a body. The family continued to defend Florian and they said that the police were so focused on him that they had stopped investigating other possibilities. That's when they talked about their own theory. A few weeks before the disappearance, Rebecca met through the internet a boy her age named Max. This boy didn't live in Berlin but he wanted to meet Rebecca in person, something his parents refused. The family believes that on the day of the events Rebecca skipped classes to meet Max and as it happens in many of these cases maybe she was not the person she claimed to be and took her away. The strangest thing of all is that two days after Rebecca's disappearance, Max also disappeared because he deleted all his social media profiles and no one could contact him. The agents said that they knew about Max's existence but did not clarify the extent to which he had been investigated. Although they continued to suspect Florian, they had no choice but to release him again once again for lack of evidence. However, the authorities declared something chilling, and for them Rebecca left that house lifeless. To formally accuse Florian they need more solid evidence or for the body to appear, because they want to avoid taking him to trial without having everything well tied up. It has been five years since Rebecca's disappearance and although the agents continue to investigate other avenues, the main suspect is still Florian.